This week on This is America and the World, we paid a visit to the African Union Mission in Washington. I sat down with Trade and Industry Commissioner Albert Muchanga to talk about the goals of the revolutionary upcoming Africa Continental Free Trade Area. Commissioner Muchanga previously served as Zambia's ambassador to Ethiopia. This is America and the World is brought to you by Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology, sharing tomorrow. The Washington Diplomat, a world of news and perspective. The Sultanate of Oman. The U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation. Julia Chang Block, President. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Forerunner Foundation, dedicated to forward thinking public policy. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. Ambassador, so good to meet you. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, what brings you to the United States? Um, here, it's an annual event. Uh, the African group of ambassadors here have what they call the midterm review of the AGOA, the African Growth and Opportunity Act. So we come from headquarters to support them because uh, they meet under the auspices of the African Union. Mm -hmm. So I come here to work with them and uh, uh, undertake the uh, 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 consultations on uh, how we are doing in implementation of uh, the AGOA. Uh, the AGOA is African Growth and Opportunity Act. Act yes. That's an American invention, isn't it? Yes, it is a, uh, it's a preference uh, scheme designed uh, by uh, the US administrations to promote uh, the development of exports from Africa to uh, the United States of uh, America. In quite a number of cases, uh, the companies from Africa exporting to the U.S. have not been able to meet the, uh, the, 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 the supply requirements because they lack the capacity, so it has been uh, underutilized. So, uh, making progress? We, we are here and there we are making uh, progress, uh, but uh, we only have six years more remaining before the agreement uh, it comes up for renewal, or I don't know if it to, uh, it to be extended or not extended. And because of that, uh, there's an element of uncertainty from the business. So they are not sure if they can invest now, large scale, to enter the U.S. market and uh, still be able to sustain operations beyond uh, six years. Ah. So uh, a, a new element of uncertainty has emerged. What kind of goods are coming from Africa to the United well, States? Well, mostly our fuels. The major component of uh, uh, exports from Africa to, uh, to the U.S. Uh, are commodities, uh, principally fuels. And uh, uh, over the years, I think the demand uh, from, uh, from Africa has fallen down because uh, uh, the U.S. is able to meet the demand now because of developments in the oil sector. Mm, so yes. oil, big. Yes, big. I'm surprised to find out that within Africa, 55 countries, uh -huh. that the trade between the countries is uh, not terribly extensive, uh -huh. maybe 10 to 15 percent. Yes, 10 to 18 percent. Uh, yet in Asia, 50 percent. Mm -hmm. In Europe, 70 mm percent -hmm. yes. country to country, yes. huh? Yes. What have you got uh, working that will solve some of that? I think the first issue is uh, why is it th so? Why it is so? Good. Because uh, uh, when Africa uh, was colonized, uh, colonized uh, it was uh, designed in such a way that it would be a major export of, uh, exporter of commodities mm -hmm. uh, to the colonial, colonial metropole. So historically, Africa has been an exporter of commodities. The transport networks and communications networks which were established were designed to facilitate the export of those commodities to the uh, metropole. And as a result, African economies remained isolated from each other. Uh -huh. that, that is the one. In. So uh, there was no value addition and uh, there was isolation. 
and the, the level of trade has been very low. But when you look at the pattern of intra-African trade, which is somewhere between 15 to 18%, percent, 42% of that is uh, in manufactured goods. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Africa exports commodity to the rest of the world. Then Africa exports uh, uh, manufactured goods within Africa. Within. And uh, that's now when we come to the issue of how to transform that. Uh, I want to back up for just a second and uh, ask you this general question. Uh -huh. When you look at Africa and African countries mm -hmm. today, what do you see? Well, what I see are fragmented economies. Mm -hmm. okay. They are very, very small relative to the, uh, to, 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 to the economies in the rest of, of the world. And they are still isolated. The infrastructure connectivity is not fully very developed. But in spite of these uh, uh, challenges, Africa has come of age to say we have to solve our own problems. Mm -hmm. And that's how the idea of the African continental free trade area was uh, moted. So that we increase the level of trade among African countries and also remove the, uh, uh, the fragmentation by creating a big aggregate economy that can attract large scale and long term investments. Okay. So, yes. 55 countries. Yes. Population over a billion, huh? 1.27 billion. 1.27 billion. Yes. <coughs> and vast from yes. South Africa to yes. Egypt, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Tell me the good news that's happening in Africa right now. Well, uh, the good news is that uh, as a result of that realization, uh, the African governments uh, decided in 2020, uh, 2012 to uh, negotiate the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. Okay. And the, the negotiations were launched in uh, 2015 in Johannesburg. And uh, they gave a timeline of two years to complete uh, the negotiations. And these were completed uh, in uh, December 2017 in Niamey, Niger. And when that was done and the report came to the heads of state and government in January 2018, they decided that uh, there should be a signing ceremony for, for the agreement on the 21st March uh, 2018 in Kigali, uh, Rwanda. And the, 44 countries immediately signed in Kigali, Rwanda. Okay, this and is a free trade area agreement. Yes. for the entire Fifth continent of, of Africa. Africa. Yes, and it's going to be the biggest since the establishment of the World Trade Organization. Okay, well, back up for just a second. Trade is crucial mm -hmm. to the success of every country, yes. isn't it? It is. Trade, uh, and that trade between countries is now in focus in Africa. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how how did this idea come about to create a kind of a one Africa, uh, mm. as far as trade was concerned? Yes, it, 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 this is to aggregate the, uh, the, 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 the fragmented markets, or use the other word, defragment, so that we create one integrated market. And for it to work, it should be uh, facilitated with the free flow of goods and services so that uh, people benefit uh, from the, 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 the process. So, so that, that's as, how we're working. As it stands now, uh, there is not free access from one country to yes. another, is it? Y huh? Yes, yes, yes. Because, uh, so we're talking about fr uh, free access of goods, services, mm -hmm. yes. uh, investments, yes. people. Yes, people, yes. So to go from one country to another right now is a very complicated situation. Yes, because like I indicated, the area we are living uh, is products of history, yep. but we're going to develop um, uh, what we call trade-related infrastructure to promote connectivity among the Africans. So we've got to, uh, what we call the single African air transport as a component part of that. So when you're talking about that, when you're talking about infrastructure, because uh, several years ago I was in Benin, uh -huh. Everything moves by truck, mm -hmm. and it's not easy to move by yes. truck mm -hmm. on uh, roads mm -hmm. that are not very good. Mm -hmm. huh? So you're talking about an infrastructure. Yes. What do you see? Do you see uh, better roads? Do you see rail? Do you see air? How is that going to work? A complete set of them. Uh -huh. uh, better roads, uh -huh. better railways, uh, better air transport, better telecommunications facilities. Uh -huh. Yes, all, all of them. And the, the motivation is the creation of the African continental free trade area. 
With that, there's going to be public-private partnerships in the development of infrastructure. Uh, with uh, when you say public private you mean government and the private African sector. African yes. businesses yes yes uh, how about businesses from the outside if they want they can come on uh, we've got African businesses they call themselves the Afro champions this they, they said they are going to address the uh, infrastructure challenge in Africa and when we meet on 7th July this year to launch the operational phase of the African continent of Red Area, they're going to make a major commitment on how they're going to address that. Uh -huh. So we're talking about the continental free trade area. Yes. And that is, so when you uh, look at that, uh, a number of countries have ratified it yes. already. 24, yes. 24. Mm -hmm. Do they have to go back to their countries and have the parliament uh, sign off? No, no. Or when they've ratified, when, when they, ratified. Yeah. because the process of ratification is that uh, first of all, the president signs, yeah. then the president takes it to cabinet, and the cabinet takes it to the National Assembly or Parliament to go and approve the, 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 the agreement. That approval is a process of ratification. Then it comes back from uh, the parliament for the president now to sign the certificate of ratification and uh, the president gives it to the ambassador to bring it to us at the African Union. So those 24, they've gone through the parliamentary processes. Uh -huh. And the agreement, uh, we needed a minimum of 22. Okay. We are able to get uh, 24. So on the 30th uh, May this year, the agreement came into force. So um, how about all these countries that have not signed on? Uh, that, that makes the process very complicated, 52 doesn't it? 52 have signed. 52 have yes, signed. Yes, only remaining with three countries that have not signed. And the remaining countries that have not signed are Nigeria, yep. Benin, and Eritrea. So 52 have signed. But Nigeria is the big one, isn't it? Yes, but uh, I'm in touch with the, the authorities in, in Nigeria. They've assured me that in terms of they should be able to, uh, to sign. What you should understand is that um, they were just going into elections. And uh, they have a long transition period after the elections, almost uh, five months. So the president was uh, uh, sworn in not too long ago. He has to have his cabinet. So they've assured me that uh, they're, 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 they're going to be on board. So, you, so you're comfortable with them now? Yeah, I'm, I'm very comfortable. They've assured me. How I've about the other two? In, in, in same Benin, they've assured me that end time soon they're going to, to sign. Okay. Uh, the, our colleagues from Eritrea, if you know the history of Eritrea, there was a time, uh, there was some tension between Eritrea and uh, Ethiopia, but yes, uh, there's yes, yes, now yes, peace. Yes. With that, they are ready now to say, first of all, take us through the agreement, because they're not participating uh, effectively in the negotiations. Take us through the agreement. We're going to take them through the agreement. So over time, they're also going to, go, to come on board. Now, there are 55 African countries. Mm -hmm. 24 have ratified. Only 31 remaining to, 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 to ratify. Out of those 31, uh, work is very active in about 15 to 20 African countries uh, to prepare uh, the ratification process. So by October, we are going to have an increased number of ratifications. And when we go to Niamey for the summit, we expect a lot of countries to, to, to ratify. Uh, you come from Zambia? Yes, I come from Zambia. So uh, what, what countries are surrounding Zambia or next door? Well, Zambia has uh, eight neighbors. Uh, we've got uh, Tanzania. We've got uh, Malawi, uh, we've got uh, Mozambique. Okay, let me just ask this yes. question. If you wanted to travel from uh, Zambia to Malawi, uh -huh. complicated, easy? It, right now it's easy because we have a, a road network. Okay. Yes. How about visas and such? Well, well uh, in, in, not, 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 not a major problem. It's visa free between Zambia and Malawi. But with this uh, free trade area, yes. you want people to be able to move Th in and out Africa. without yes. any yes. problem at all. That, that's the idea. That's because the idea. Uh, the idea is eventually to come up with an African passport. Yes. So we have now what we call the protocol on the free movement of people, right of residence and right of establishment. It has received two ratifications and about 35, uh, 32 signatures. When it comes into force, we are going to... Uh, to, 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 to create an African passport, and there's going to be mutual recognition of academic qualifications, such that if somebody qualifies, for example, in Zambia, they can be able to, their qualifications can be recognized in Ethiopia, and vice versa. Was a problem with Nigeria, they were a little concerned about some of the unions, concerned about the workers 
coming and taking their jobs? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that in there someplace? Yes, well, that's the price Am of right? Democrats. Huh? That, that, that's the price of uh, Democrats. Uh, the stakeholders said they needed the government to consult them. So the government of uh, Nigeria had a very extensive consultation process. They went into the regions, they went into the trade union, and they went into the business people and several other stakeholders. So they undertook a very, very comprehensive consultation process and they, they, they must be commended for that. This is a huge deal, isn't it? It is. This is huge. It is. What kind of a, if you put all the countries together, what kind of an economy are we talking about? Uh, millions uh, or trillions uh, or billions? 2.5 trillion US dollars. 2.5 trillion US, US dollars. dollars. It's, it's a big economy. And okay. that is going to attract large scale and long term investment. Now, is it easy for a country or a business from the outside? to invest in an African country, or is there too much red tape? No, no, we are going to remove um, the, the red tape. But um, uh, out of this uh, agreement, we are also going to come up with the additional protocols. One is uh, the protocol on in, in investment, so that we in harmonize the investment uh, laws and procedures across the continent, so that all the red tape is eliminated. We're also going to come up with a, a, a protocol on competition policy to pr promote competition. And we're going to come up with a protocol on intellectual property rights to safeguard the, uh, the, the inventions of, uh, of people. So it's going to create an attractive market. People maybe on the outside might be concerned about uh, corruption. Have uh -huh. to put that on the table. And good government. Yes. Uh, good governance. Yes. And also uh, justice and yes. legal mm, systems. Mm. Can you work together to solve some of yes, those problems? Yes, we are going to work to get together. Uh, uh, two years ago, the theme of uh, the summit was uh, on combating corruption. Good. So the heads of state and government are very committed to really combating uh, co 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 corruption. And uh, uh, in the, all the governments, there is a commitment to really uh, promote uh, transparent, transparency and accountability under the rule of law. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the investments will be safe. What's your job as commissioner? My job as commissioner is the commissioner for trade and industry. And I'm responsible for the development of quite a number of areas there. The development of mining, the development of trade, the development of trade, uh, I mean, mining, trade, industry, and customs cooperation. Ah. Yes. The, Within all of the Africa? Across Africa. Woo! Yes. Big job. Quite a, a lot of work, but I've got a very supportive team, and the, uh, I'm lucky I've got a very good relations with the member states. Very supportive. The, the so member states are very supportive. So let's look at this free trade area and how it might be working. Yeah. Um, so you're talking about uh, free movement of goods, y services, yes. mm -hmm. investment, yes. and people. Mm -hmm. um, how would it work from the outside, would there be a kind of a common denominator as far as taxes or tariffs? Would, would it be collectively mm. going against uh, or operating with other countries? Well, uh, what is going to happen is that when we've got a free trade area, each country is going to maintain its commercial policy in the sense that uh, each of the 55 countries we have uh, a structure of uh, coming up with the tariffs with third parties. Now, when we move to the next outside. one. Outside. Yes, outside. When we, we, we deepen the process of inter integration, that's when we are now going to, to create what we are going to call the African Customs Union. And at that stage, we are going to have a common external tariff. But that is for the future, it's not yet to be for now. So now each country has a, 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 an external tariff with the third parties. But within Africa, we have zero rating, so that there is free movement of goods and services. No tariffs. No tariffs. That's huge. It's a huge undertaking. That's huge. Yeah. Uh, earlier in our conversation, you talked about uh, the East and West uh -huh. uh, coming to the African countries uh -huh. for commodities. Yes. Commodities, we're really talking about... Uh, that which is mine and mm. also uh, oil. Oil, yes. Mm. That's the big commodities, yes. mm. right? Mm. Do you have a feeling that the only reason that East and West have been coming to Africa was commodities and then going home? Well, if you look at the history of uh, colonialism, uh, colonialism was looking for markets. 
if you look at the, the history of uh, colonialism. So when uh, the colonies were established to be suppliers of commodities, they were also designed to be consumers of manufactured goods from the colonial metro, metropole. That was the arrangement. Yes, and, the, and, the, and, and again, that would give the reason why there was very little trade among African countries. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, British colonies were getting manufactured goods from Britain and nowhere else. Similarly, for French colonies, they were getting manufactured goods from France and nowhere else. Uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh. but now, with the, the African continental free trade area, we wanted to increase trade among ourselves. Anchored on manufactured goods and the agro-processed go goods. So agriculture and manufacturing. Yeah, yes. So free trade area goes into effect. Yes. When do you think it will be in effect? Uh, well, uh, illegally, it came into effect on the 30th May this year. Then when we meet with the heads of state and government on 7th July in Niamey, Niger, this year, they are going to guide us when actual trading will start. It may be within six months or it may be within uh, 12 months, but we'll get guidance from the heads of state and government. Okay. What do you see as the benefits as far as this free trade area is concerned? Mm. Africa free trade area. What do you see as the benefits that will come from it? A lot of benefits. One, when we increase the trade among African countries, we're also expanding production. And when we do that, we are transforming the economy to make it more competitive than it currently is. Okay. And when we are expanding act, uh, uh, economic activities across society, you create opportunities for a creation of decent jobs. And Africa is a young continent. We have got very young people. When they see real opportunities in Africa, they'll stop migrating to the rest oh, of yeah, the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. yes. Because they would say, why uh, should I go very far? when what I want can be found in Africa. So it's jobs? I, I, jobs. Growth? I, economic growth? Growth. Competition? Competition, yes. All, 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 all and also dignity, because our young people, they lose their dignity when they, they are stranded in other parts of the world. Uh, they, some of them end up into modern day slavery. So it has everything to do about the human decency. Mm. Yeah. So uh, as we come down to the end of our conversation, we just have a couple of minutes left. Uh -huh. um, leadership from the various countries mm. is important. Mm -hmm. Leadership, mm -hmm. uh, focus, yes. continued yeah. focus. Yes. Uh, also a certain amount of courage. Yes. Yes. It takes courage yes. to do this yes. thing. Huh? Yes. This is a big deal. Yes, that's true. Yes. <laughs> uh, 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 who, what countries are playing a leading role here? Well, uh, in 2012, all the heads of state and government said uh, we need to create opportunities for the expansion of intra-African trade. And, and I gave you the historical account on how we started and uh, ended up in uh, Kigali and finally the agreement uh, was signed. Then uh, the heads of state and government decided uh, to appoint in uh, 2017 the president of Niger as the champion for the African continent of Free uh -huh, Area, uh -huh. so that I could work very closely with him, then he would be able to liaise with his peers to move the process forward. So if I have any problem, all I need is to get to him and he'll be able to ring his peers to say, we need to do this to move the process forward. And there has been a lot of enthusiasm from the African heads of state and government. And that's why I moved very, very fast. Because before I end the interview, let, let me get that in. In the history of um, uh, legal instruments in the African Union, it takes, on average, five years for a legal instrument to come into effect. The agreement establishing the African continental free trade area was done in one year, one month, one week, and one day. Ah. Which <laughs> was very rapid. Uh-huh. Very rapid. Yes. Yes. So Nigeria plays a big role in, in kind of taking a leading uh, position uh -huh. in making all of this happen, mm -hmm. huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, uh, Nigeria was chairperson of, um, uh, of course, uh, we rotate the chairpersons uh, uh, every year. So when we finished the, the negotiations in Niamey, Niger, 20, 2017, Nigeria was chairperson of the negotiating team. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, it's Uganda uh, leading the, 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 the negotiations. So it has played a, a very, very constructive role, leading and constructive role. Uh, relationship with the African Union and the United States a good one? Very, very good. Every year we meet. Uh, the Department of State and the African Union Commission meet every year to consult on a range of issues, trade and investment, 
uh, peace and security, and the various other issues. So we are developing the relations, very, very cordial relations. And at uh, the highest political level, the Secretary of State is in regular contact with the chairperson of the African Union Commission. Ambassador, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you so much for our conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you for the education. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. For information about This Is America and the World, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, or our YouTube channel, This Is America TV, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can listen to all of our Ambassador interviews on our podcast, The Ambassador Series. It's available on our website and iTunes. This is America and the World is brought to you by Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology sharing tomorrow. The Washington Diplomat, a world of news and perspective. The Sultanate of Oman. The U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation. Julia Chang Block, President. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Forerunner Foundation, dedicated to forward-thinking public policy. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy presenting international artists in diplomatic settings.